that fellow. We're only there for PBQ gasoline. Here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello show. It's the new transcribed Abbott and Costello show with the new singing discovery Susan Miller and Matty Malnick Orchestra and yours truly Michael Roy. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. I was sitting in the front row at the first theater. Why were you sitting in the front row? Well, they wouldn't let me sit on the stage. <laughs> and yes, you know, I was walking down here to the studio, and a fellow was following me with a shotgun. So I run and he run, up one street and down another. Well, he didn't shoot you with a shotgun. No, it turned out all right. He was on his way to a wedding. <laughs> I mean, all right, look, <laughs> enough of this silliness. Uh, do you know that this is uh, National Dog Week, Lou? Oh, sure. And I celebrate all those weeks. National Apple Week, I went out and I had an apple. National Donut Week, I went out and I had a donut. National Baby Week, I went out. I didn't celebrate that. Now, wait a minute. Look. <laughs> By the way, uh, didn't I see an ad in the paper this morning where you wanted a secretary to answer your fan mail? Yes. I put in an ad. Did you get any answers? Hmm? <laughs> yes. A beautiful redhead walked into my patio, and I started interviewing her. After a few questions, I didn't waste any time. I started chasing her around the barbecue. Well, that sounds great. Uh, why didn't you hire her? Hire her? I couldn't even catch her. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Susan Miller didn't hear you say that. And uh, what about uh, that little brunette you were at the uh, Palladium last night with? Oh, I lost her to an Irishman on account of incompatibility. Incompatibility? Yes, we were sitting in a living room in incompat, and he had more ability. No. <laughs> Such an idiot. Oh, it's an old recipe that's been in my family for years. Speaking of your family, how is Uncle Mike, Lou? Oh, fine, fine. Fine, oh, fine. Fine. Aunt May presented him with a baby boy New Year's. The new baby was such a shock to him that he quit smoking. He used to be a chain smoker. Uh, gave up cigarettes, eh? No, uh, he didn't smoke cigarettes. He smoked chains. <laughs> Relax and listen a minute. My friend here has has got something interesting to say. Uh, run, get your drink of water, Junior. This announcement is for independent PDQ dealers only. Men, as you know, PDQ is now beginning their umpteenth annual Keep the Windshield Clean, Somebody Might Want to Look Through It campaign, which will last throughout 1948. The famous PDQ anti-slurp technique of washing windshields without drowning the occupant of the car came to a high degree of perfection last season, and we will continue to use this method at all stations in all areas. We have some gratifying reports from last year's 52 consecutive PDQ Wiper Windshield Week Week. And through your efforts, approximately 8 million motorists discovered what was on the other side of their windshields for the first time. They found it quite interesting. Now, I want all you men to get behind our two specials. The split-second frontal quick clean for motorists in a hurry, and our peachy keen super special supersonic all-around wipe for late model Studebakers. Remember the PDQ slogan, men? Anyone caught driving into a PDQ station... Is going to get his windshield wiped. We just took a minute for a mighty important message. Now a minute for some mighty good music. Matty Malnick and his orchestra play the best things in life.
Alan, come over here. Where were you all afternoon? Well, I took a walk down Hollywood Boulevard, Abbott. And just as I was passing Nancy's department store, all the girls in the window winked at me. You dope. Those are not girls in that window. They're dummies. Dummies? They ain't so dumb. They were all wearing mink coats. <laughs> well, never mind that. Never mind that. Listen. What was your Aunt May doing out? Will you ask my question? Cook, cook, cook. What was your Aunt May doing out on Sunset Boulevard this morning, banging the pavement with a big sledgehammer? Well, she and my Uncle Mike had a fight, and he told her to hit the road. <laughs> Happened to get married. Well, one night, Uncle Mike proposed to her. He didn't have an engagement ring, so he slipped a cigar band on her finger. Where did you get the cigar band? Aunt May was smoking at the time. Costello, <laughs> why is it none of your family or none of your relatives ever get along? Well, they all get along, Abbott. Why, my Aunt Eva's the oldest married woman in Baltimore. She's been married 50 years. Has she ever been separated from her husband? Only once. Hmm, that's fine. How long? 50 years. 50 years? <laughs> Please talk, Sims. What happened to your Uncle Jim? I haven't seen him since New Year's Eve. Oh, Uncle Jim is home playing jack o lantern uh, How does he play jack o lantern He just sits in the window and gets lit up. <laughs> he work? Oh, he don't have to work. He won $5,000 on the People of Funny Show. And he split with my Aunt Alma. Uh, what's your Aunt Alma going to do with her share? What share? I said he split with her. He left town with the money. <laughs> Elma feels bad about it, doesn't she? Yes, since Uncle Jim lives, she can't eat, she can't sleep, she can't go to the movies. Why? She ain't got no money. Uh, I was right. You and your whole family are morons. Watch out what you say about us morons, Abbott. We're organized now. (laughs) Hey, Mr. Costello, I want to thank you for that lovely Christmas gift you sent me. It was the most wonderful game I ever played. Game? I didn't send you any game. That was an autographed picture of myself. How do you like that? All night long, my wife and I sat up trying to pin a tail on it. (laughs) His mother is jealous of all the other mothers. Why? They had children. (laughs) He's a pretty good actor, Costello. Last week, he was on Information, Please. Yes, and they couldn't guess what he was. pictures out of my new Esquire magazine, do you? I did it, Abbott, but I did it by mistake. Mistake? Yes. I thought it was a Sears Roebuck catalog. I was sending in my order. Cut. <laughs> uh, Costello, the only way you can get a girl is by mail is to join a Lonely Hearts Club. I did that once. I sent my picture in the Lonely Hearts Club and they sent it back with a note. And what did the note say? We're not that lonely. <laughs> Costello, you're a wolf. Do you know what a wolf is? Sure. A wolf is an animal on two legs that's got a pair of eyes on two other legs. <laughs> Costello, if you find a nice girl and get married, I'll go to Washington and get Margaret Truman to sing. I'll have her sing, Oh, Promise Me, at your wedding. Okay. While you're at it, see if you can get Congress to promise something, too. No girl would have you. You're too fat. You'll never get a beautiful girl with your shape. Who wants a girl with my shape? I want Susan Miller. After the show last week, Susan kissed me. She did? Yes. Uh, what kind of a kiss did she give you? Uh, was it a sisterly kiss, a friendly kiss, or, or a real sweetheart kiss? I don't know. Which is the one where she has to help you down off the channel air when it's all over? Susan Miller! Oh, Susan, you look so pretty tonight. What makes you so beautiful? Well, Costello, you know the old saying. Girls are made of sugar and spice and everything nice. The ones I get are garlic and hash and your father's old mustache. <laughs> Susan, don't pay any attention to this B-O-O-B. Oh, that's a good one. I'll bet he doesn't even know what B-O-O-B means. I do so. It's B-O, spelled forward, backwards, and sideways. <laughs> Costello, why don't you stop forcing your attention on Susan? She's not for you. She's of the upper crust. And you're the lower crust. 
she we could make beautiful pies together? <laughs> Costello, Susan is not your type. I'd be more suited to, to her. I, I have finesse. I'm hoity-toity. Abbott, you may be hoity, but you'll never see toity again. <laughs> well, look, how did you take pity on Costello, Susan? And go out to dinner with him tonight. I will not. Last time I went to a restaurant with him, there was some silverware missing, and the cashier wanted to search me. But, Susan, you're not the type to steal silverware. That's what I told the cashier. But she said if I would walk out of the restaurant with Costello, I'd walk out with anything. <laughs> Susan, if you don't go out with me tonight, I'll disappear. And tomorrow morning, the police will be dragging the Los Angeles River for my body. But they won't find me. Why? I'll be home in bed. <laughs> oh, so long, Pastor. Costello, you'd better be nice to Susan Miller. She's moving into your boarding house today, and she's uh, taking the room directly above you. She's going to be in room 215, and I'm in 115? That's right. Have it. Call the OPA. What for? I want them to remove my ceiling. I... <laughs> hey, will Susan be in that room all the time? Well, you know Susan... She goes in and out. Did you notice that too, Abbott? <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. The woman I love living right upstairs. Oh, stop, Costello. You're not in love with Susan. She's just uh, a passing fancy. Well, I never passed up with anything that fancy. <laughs> oh, I hope she likes the room. Oh, uh, she should like the room. She gets bored with it. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> Uh, I said, she gets bored with a room. If she gets bored with the room, why does she rent it in the first place? Oh, she's not bored with the room. She's very happy. You just said that she gets bored with the That's room. That's right. Where's she getting all that lumber? <laughs> I'm not talking about lumber. I'm talking about board. Susan eats her board. Who feeds her all these boards? The landlady. <laughs> the landlady, of course. Susan made arrangements with the landlady to eat her board. Three times a day. Thirty days a month. Yeah, but I'm moving out of that place. Why? That Susan Miller is going to eat me out of house and home. <laughs> what are you getting so excited about? What business? What business is it of yours? What she does to her room? I'll make it my business, brother. Her floor happens to be my ceiling. <laughs> I don't mind you knocking the props out from under me every week, but I ain't going to let that Susan Miller eat the roof from over my head. <laughs> There's no sense getting yourself into a frenzy. What? A what? Frenzy, frenzy. I'm not making frenzies with nobody. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, you idiot. I'll try to explain. War. By giving you an example. Now, in your room, the plaster is all cracked. So you have a floor in your ceiling. I got a floor in my ceiling. Certainly. How do you like that? I've been living upside down. <laughs> now I find out. Costello, you're all mixed up. Now, uh, how do you get so daffy? Because I've been living upside down for six years. What's your excuse? Now, wait a minute. How do you like walking around on your head? I'm not walking around on my head, neither are you. I'm only trying to tell you that Susan's room is perfect. It has no flaw. And she's happy because she gets bored with the room. Here we go again. No, the, the reason she likes to get bored with the room is because she gets so hungry after a busy day at the studio that she rushes home and eats like a beaver. Now he's got her eating beaver boards. <laughs> she does not eat beaver boards. You just said she eats a board like a beaver. I said she eats like a beaver. What is she? What does she eat like a beaver? Her board. I trapped him again. All right. <laughs> Forget about the beaver. Susan eats her board three times a day. She starts with breakfast. I suppose for breakfast she has a couple of soft boiled shingles. No, no, wait. <laughs> if you will excuse me, Mr. Rabbit, I got to run over and nail a sign of Susan Miller's door to warn other rumors. What kind of a sign? What kind of a sign? Yeah. Beware. Susan Miller, girl, termite. We'll be back with the nonsense of the flick of an eyelash, folks, after a few comments on this subject. Ladies and gentlemen, during the intermission, I will pass among you with the incredible true facts about PDQ compounded motor oil. For here is an oil of such wonder-working magic that the management guarantees not one, not two, not three or four, but five surprise prizes in each and every quart of PDQ compounded motor oil. First, the detergent, the miracle ingredient that cleans away old carbon, actually brightens, shines, and beautifies the motor as you drive. Two, the antiformant inhibits dangerous foam and lava, reduces the dreaded air bubble in the oil line. Third... 
The carbon inhibitor minimizes the catastrophic consequences of the oxidation, the bane of all internal combustion engines. What? Anti-acid. Scientifically neutralizes the dangerous acidity of hydrocarbonic combustion, which, running rampant, mars the fair escutcheon of costly bearings. Last but not least, PDQ compounded motor oil contains the viscosity index regulator. And, of course, you know what that means. For your convenience, PDQ compounded motor oil is sold during the performance and afterwards at all PDQ service stations. And now, Abbott and Costello continue. Costello singing star, Susan Miller, singing the perennial favorite, Sometimes I'm Happy. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm blue. My disposition depends on you. I never mind the rain in the sky. As long as I see sun in your eyes, sometimes I hate you, sometimes I love you, but when I hate you, it's cause I love you, that's how I am, so what can I do, I'm happy when I'm with you. Sometimes I'm blue, my disposition depends on you, I never mind the rain in the sky, just as long as I see the sun you rise, sometimes I hate you, sometimes I love you, but when I hate you, it's cause I love you. That's how I am, so what can I do? I'm happy when I'm with you. So happy when I'm with you. Well, Costello, did Susan Miller move into that room in your uh, roomy house? She couldn't have it. When she got there, it was over. He rented to a family of 14. And none of them are working. 14 people in one room? How do they pay the rent? They take in boarders. <laughs> I'm going to move out of there myself, Abbott. I'm getting sick of having a room with an adjoining. An adjoining what? I don't know. I can never get the other door open. <laughs> you had any sense you'd buy an apartment building. Invest your money now. Who knows? Tomorrow your dollar may be worth 10 cents. Abbott, do you really think the value of the dollar is going to go up? <laughs> Costello, if you owned an apartment house, who would you rent to? Well, let me see. Well, I'd rent one apartment to a lawyer. Why? That's in case I get in trouble. And I'd rent one to a gorgeous letter. Why? That's to make sure I get in trouble. <laughs> Costello, to be a landlord, you've got to be tough. If the man on the first floor don't pay his rent, you squeeze it out of him. I can't do that. That's not me. Well, if the man on the second floor can't pay his rent, you squeeze it out of him. That's not me. If that gorgeous redhead can't pay her rent, you That's me! Shut up! I think I'll rent an apartment of Susan Miller right across the court for mine. Then I can see her morning, noon, and night. Now, what makes you so sure you'll see so much of her? The apartment I rent her won't have any window shades. <laughs> Come on, Costello. Let's go to the real estate broker and see if we can buy you an apartment house. So you want to buy an apartment, huh, Costello? Well, wet me work at my whisting. Here's a small apartment over a garage. It has a lovely living room, a gorgeous bedroom, and the bathroom is out of this world. Uh, ain't that a wibble in Kawimit? <laughs> Costello, how does this sound to you? A Swiss chalet. 
Swiss architecture, Swiss furniture. Sounds pretty cheesy to me. <laughs> Maybe you could build Costello a new house. Nothing doing. I'm making all of them new ones out of taft bricks. What a taft brick. Every time it gets a little dewy, they drop out. <laughs> My Uncle Mike built an apartment next to the zoo. He's so nearsighted, he started nailing zebras over the windows. Nailed zebras over the windows? Yes, he thought they were awning. Uh, Sally, your Uncle Mike knows nothing about building, and neither do you. I do so. Uh, what's the first thing you do in building a house? I call up the corset shop. To build a house, you call a corset shop? Sure, where do you think I can get my foundation? <laughs> Mr. Broker, don't you have an apartment house that's, that's a real bargain? Oh, I got just a house for you, Costello. Jane Wattle lives on one side of it. Who lives on the other side? Who cares? I'll take it. <laughs> oh, come on, Costello. <laughs> Costello, you dummy, you bought this apartment house to get a place to live, and there isn't a vacancy in the building. You ought to have your brains examined. I did have it. I had my brains examined at Harvard. What do they say? I don't know. I haven't got them back yet. <laughs> hey, look, Costello, you're the landlord of this, this building, and you have a right to an apartment. Now, go to that door and tell the tenant... To move. Act up. Up? Really, up? I'll throw him out. Yes. What do you want? I'm the new landlord, and I'm here to ask you... Wait a minute till I finish talking to my wife. Emma, I told you a thousand times. I like parsley on my steak. Tonight, you forgot the parsley. And you know what that means. Now, landlord, what was you going to ask me? Um, are you getting enough hot water? Stop the knock on the door. I'll talk to that tin. Okay, Abbott. Oh, it's you again. Excuse me. But my partner wants to talk to you. My man, you're dealing with Bud Abbott now. I don't want to ask you to... Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Uh, wait a minute, I can't till I talk to my son. What's the trouble, Percy? Well, you told me I could go out of the house tonight and get some fresh air. So I did. Out you go, son! <laughs> now, Abbott, what was you going to ask? Are you sure you're getting enough hot water? Hey, my new habit, you're a coward. You're the coward. Stand there and let him talk that way to me. Habit, there's only one reason I didn't let him have it. What's that? I haven't got it. <laughs> well, never mind him. Let's try this next apartment here. And this time be firm. Make them get out. Go ahead, knock on the door. Hello. Abbott, she's beautiful. Look at the sweater she's wearing. Uh-huh, uh-huh, Costello. Don't let her pull the wool over your eyes. Uh, she's pulling my eyes over the wool. <laughs> well, 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 mon petit chouchou. Now, what can I do for you, eh? Well, uh, what could you have in mind? <laughs> Costello, Costello, Costello. Remember, you've got to think of some way to make her move. I got it. I'll tickle her. <laughs> Let me handle it. Uh, miss, you're uh, very sweet, but Costello's the new landlord, and he needs your apartment, so you'll have to move. Oh, please, please, Monsieur Costello. I've been mm. here for five years. Well, I... Look, look, look. I decorated this place myself. I'm, I'm... There's a part of me in every room. There's a part of me in the living room. There's a part of me in the dining room. There's a part of me in the kitchen. I hope you didn't misplace anything. <laughs> Parts like yours are still hard to get. <laughs> Can't tell her she's got... 
She's got to abandon the apartment. Okay. She's got to have a band in the apartment. <laughs> so that's wrong. You've got to abandon the apartment. That means you've got to... That's a lie. She's got to abandon the apartment. Tell her she's got to get... She's got to leave. Well, okay. Miss... You'll have to be out of here in eight hours. Well, all right, if you say so. And now, handsome, may I kiss you goodbye? <coughs> now, when do I have to leave? I'll give you 24 hours. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then I'll thank. Goodbye. <sighs> hmm. Remember now. You gotta leave within ten days. <laughs> if you ain't out of here by nineteen sixty three, there's gonna be trouble. <laughs> That's silly, you're a weak thing. Be firm. Tell her to get out. Okay. Miss, there's only one thing I wanna say to you. Could you could you wait till I say goodbye to my brother? Who's your brother? The big tough guy in the next apartment. Now, what were you going to say, Costello? Are you sure you're getting enough hot water? <laughs> Don't go away, folks. Our stars will be back. But first, they'd like you to listen to this. Let's not beat about the bush. PDQ would dearly love to have more independent dealers selling our gasoline, but we just can't throw the gates wide open, for we feel that we must have a very special kind of a guy pumping our gas. So this announcement is intended primarily for good, experienced, independent dealers who thought about getting on the PDQ team. Fellas, it's like this. If you've reached a point where you'd like to be selling gas you can be proud of, both for quality and reputation... If you've seen motorists slow down at your station but drive on because they've never heard of that stuff you're pumping, then PDQ, best known and most respected name among the independents, is the brand name for you. On the other hand, if you're just a cog in a vast machine and getting tired of getting memos on how to park your hair and would like to run your own business, then PDQ's the deal for you. PDQ dealers are independent dealers running their own business, staking their own claim for business success on good products, well advertised, and good service well performed. And now, Abbott and Costello. And now, here are Abbott and Costello with the final word. Costello, in case some of our listeners haven't heard the news, uh, why don't you tell them about our Saturday morning kid show? Folks, Abbott and I are doing a special kid show every Saturday morning over this network featuring the Lou Costello Jr. Youth Foundation Award. Each week, a boy or girl is selected by you, the listeners, and Abbott and I award them with a scholarship and over $1,000 in cash and valuable prizes. Now, wait a minute. We also have guest stars and a big kid quiz game. So be sure to listen, kid, and remember to listen, too, for our regular show every Wednesday night. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. in us in New Jersey. Good night. <laughs> Tonight at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanda and featuring Susan Miller and Maddie Malnick Orchestra.